Hi friends, Miss Cassie here with Solon Public Library's Digital Storytime. This month we're talking all about asking questions. And this week we are going to be asking the question, what? <laughs> but first we need to sing our welcome song and we need to get our clapping hands ready. So we're gonna wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast. And put them on our knees. Okay, here we go. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. What do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. What do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. All right, for our last verse, we're gonna be as quiet as we can. And we're gonna whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. <laughs> Our theme song this month is questions <laughs> and we are going to count our questions on our fingers here we go we all ask questions yes we do and this is how we ask them who what where when why who what where when why who what where when why and that is how we ask them <laughs> Our first book today is, What Do You Do With a Tail Like This? Oh, and look at that tail. It's long and curly and green. Hmm, I wonder what you do do with a tail like that. And this book is written and illustrated by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. Let's find out. Animals use their noses. Can you point to your nose? Yep. And ears. Where are your ears? And tails. Do you have a tail? No. <laughs> but you have eyes. Where are your eyes? Yeah. And mouth. Show me your mouth. Ah. <laughs> and feet. Can you stomp your feet? That's right. Just like animals, we have a lot of these things and they use them in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each body part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book, you can find out even more about these animals. That is the perfect reason to check this book out from the library is to read all those extra facts at the end. And our first question is, what do you do with a nose like this? Oh, look at all those different kinds of noses. There's a long nose that has sharp teeth underneath it. There's a flat nose with little nostrils on top. There's a long winding nose. There's a nose that has stuff coming off the sides. And then there's a nose that might look kind of familiar with little whiskers. Let's see what work all these noses do. If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. That was that flat nose. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. That was the nose that kind of looked like a dog's nose. 
If you were an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. <laughs> Could you imagine using your nose to give yourself a bath? That wouldn't work very well, would it? If you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. That was the nose that had all those little like tentacles coming off of it. And if you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding your body under the water. That's pretty cool. All right, here's the next question. What do you do with ears like these? Well, there's lots of different kind of, one of those doesn't even look like an ear. One of those ears looks like a leg. Well, if you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep cool. If you're a bat, you see with your ears because bats use echolocation. They use sound to try to, to try to figure out what is in front of them or what's around them so they don't bump into things. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. If you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. <laughs> That would look pretty silly on a human to have our ears on our knees, right? But for a cricket, it works great. And if you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds that are hundreds of miles away. Wow. All right, what do you do with a tail like this? Oh, there's a a strong pink tail. There is an orange and yellow tail. I think that one looks familiar. I think that might be a giraffe's tail. There's a furry brown curly tail. There's that green tail that we saw on the cover. And then there's a fluffy black and white tail. Hmm. Do you recognize some of these tails? I think I do too. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. That's what I thought it was. I thought that was a giraffe's tail. Did you think it was a giraffe's tail too? Yeah. If you're a skunk, you lift your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on its way. If you're a lizard, you can break off your tail to get away. Oh my goodness. Did you know that some lizards can do that? If a predator grabs them by their tail, then they just leave their tail behind and they run off. That's a pretty cool trick. If you are a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. And if you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. I recognize some of those tails. I bet you did too. Ooh, here's another one. What do you do with eyes like this? Can you show me your eyes? Can you blink? One, two. We've got a lot of different looking eyes here. If you're an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high up in the air. Have you seen an eagle before? Yeah, we have a lot of them here in Iowa, huh? And you can see them flying quite a bit. If you're a chameleon, you can look two ways at once. Did you know that chameleon's eyes, one can look this way and stay looking that way and the other one looks the other way? If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. That's a neat trick. If you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. What? <laughs> And if you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. Those are all some pretty cool eyes. All right, what do you do with feet like these? Oh, let's see. I think I know that one foot in the middle that looks kind of like a hand. Who do you think that belongs to? If you said a monkey, a chimpanzee, you're right. If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. They use their feet like their hands to, to eat food. Do you think you could use your feet to put food in your mouth? That would be pretty messy, huh? <laughs> if you're a blue-footed booby, you use your feet to do a dance. 
If you are a water strider, it's a kind of insect, you use your feet to walk on top of the water. Wow. If you're a gecko, that's a kind of lizard, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. <laughs> and if you are a mountain goat, you use your feet to leap from ledge to ledge. All right, here's our last one. Are you ready? What do you do with a mouth like this? Can you open your mouth as wide as you can? Uh, it's pretty big. Let's see what these mouths do. If you're a pelican, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. If you are an egg eating snake, you use your mouth to swallow eggs that are bigger than your head. Could you imagine? Snakes have to unhinge their jaws so that they can open their mouths super wide. And you can see that snake is doing it here in this picture. If you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. And if you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. That's why their, mouth, that's why their uh, mouths and heads are shaped like that, so that they can get their heads down into the termite mounds and then lick up all those yummy termites. And if you are an archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. Look at that. They, they, they like spit. They spit the water into the air and it hits the bugs and then they fall down and then the fish eat them. Wow. And then here at the end, there are all kinds of extra facts about a lot of these animals that we read about, which is very cool and definitely worth checking this book out to learn more. <laughs> okay, I've got some more animal friends here and they are all mixed up. We have some tails. We have a white tail and a brown tail, and a blue tail, and a yellow tail, and we have some heads here. We have a duck head, and a dog head, and a bear head, and a horse head. Will you help me match up my animal heads and tails? Oh, good, thank you. Let's start with our duck. What color is our duck? That's right, our duck is yellow. Let's find a yellow tail to go with our yellow duck. Let's see. Is this a yellow tail? No, what color is this tail? That's right, it's blue. That's not a match. What about this tail? Is this a yellow tail for our ye yellow duck? Yes, it is. We've got our first match. Okay, now let's try to find the tail for our white dog. So let's see what tail matches our white dog. Is it this tail? No, what color is this tail? That's right, it's brown. That's not a match. What about this tail? Is this white tail a match for our white dog? Yes, it is. Another match. Okay, now we've got our brown bear. What tail matches our brown bear? Is it this tail? No, what color is this tail? That's right, it's blue. That's not a match. What about this tail? Is this brown tail a match for our brown bear? Yes, it is. All right, we've got one last animal. We have our blue horse. And let's see if the tail we have left is a match. What color is this tail? That's right, it's a blue tail for our blue horse. And now we have our four animals. 
They're all set up. One, let's count them together. One, two, three, four. Thanks for your help, friends. Continuing with our animal theme, <laughs> our next song is called When Cows Get Up in the Morning, and we have some little puppet friends joining us. So what animal is this first little animal? That's right, a cow. And what sound does a cow make? That's right, moo. <laughs> so here is how our song goes. When cows get up in the morning, they always say hello. When cows get up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? <laughs> Moo! <laughs> and that is what they say. All right, say goodbye to our cow friend. We have another friend joining us. What? What animal is, is this? That's right, this is a pig. And when pigs get up in the morning, they always say hello. When pigs get up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? Oink, 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 oink. <laughs> and that is what they say. <laughs> Bye, pig. Okay, we have another friend joining us. And can you tell me, hmm, what animal is this? That's right, this is a sheep. And when sheep get up in the morning, they always say hello. <laughs> when sheep get up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? Bah! <laughs> and that is what they say. Bye. <laughs> okay, we have one more friend joining us today. Can you tell me? What animal is this? That's right, it's a horse. And when horses get up in the morning, they always say hello. When horses get up in the morning, they always say hello. And what do they say? <laughs> Nay. <laughs> and that is what they say. Good singing, friends, and good animal sounds. <laughs> All right, we're gonna switch gears a little bit here for our last book today. This book is called Not a Box, and it is written by Antoinette Portis and illustrated by her as well. And she has a lot of really fun books. And uh, this one, Not a Box, we are gonna see a bunny doing all kinds of activities in something that is definitely not just a box. See if you can guess what these things are. Why are you sitting in a box? Look, there's our bunny friend just sitting in a box. Why? That's another one of our question words. <gasps> because it's not a box. What? is it if it's not a box? That's right, it's a race car. What number is on the side of this race car? We have a one and a five. That makes 15. What are you doing on top of that box? What do you think the bunny is doing? It's not a box. <laughs> what is it? That's right, it's a mountain. And that bunny has climbed all the way up to the top of Rabbit Peak. <sighs> Why are you squirting a box? What do you think the bunny is doing now? I said it's not a box. <laughs> what is it? 
That's right, it's a burning building and the bunny is a brave firefighter putting out the fire. Now you're wearing a box. What is the bunny doing now? The bunny is pretending to be a robot because this is not a box. Are you still standing around in that box? It is not, 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 not a box. What is it? It is a crow's nest on a pirate ship or the basket in a hot air balloon or the, the top of uh, riding an elephant or it is a tugboat. The box is all of those things. It's not just a box. Well, what is it then? Hmm, the bunny's thinking. It's my not a box. <laughs> and what is the bunny pretending it is now? That's right, a rocket ship. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> the end. All right, friends, thanks for listening. This is the end of our what story time this week. Don't forget to put your secret code, to record your secret code for our Winter Library Challenge. This week, the digital story time secret code is box, B-O-X. And now it's time for our goodbye song. We read a book and we played a game and we sang a song together. We read a book and we played a game. We had a fun adventure. Now go read a book and go play a game and sing a little tune. Go read a book and go play a game. We'll see time friend.